Hello and welcome to this Australian Biocommons webinar. My name is Melissa Burke and I'm the Australian Biocommons Training and Communications Officer and I'll also be your host for today. In this series of webinars, we aim to share useful information about the latest digital technologies, data and tools for the life science community. Each month, we hear from our local and international peers who present a bioinformatics topic that we hope will support Australians to deliver their best environmental, agricultural and medical research. In today's webinar, you'll hear from Anna Syme, who's going to talk to us about chloroplast genome assembly. And for those of us joining us live, you will have the opportunity to ask her questions using the Q&A function on your dashboard. We'll come back to these questions at the end of the webinar. The session is also being recorded and you'll soon find it on our YouTube, YouTube channel, along with recordings of previous webinars and workshops. If you'd like to keep in touch and hear about upcoming events, workshops and webinars, you can follow us on Twitter or subscribe to our newsletter. Before we begin the webinar, we'd like to take a moment to acknowledge the traditional owners and the custodianship of the lands on which we meet today. In my case, that is the Gitabal people of the Bundjalung Nation. We pay our respects to their ancestors and their descendants who continue cultural and spiritual connections to country. We recognise their valuable contributions to Australian and global society. Today, we are thrilled to welcome Dr. Anna Sign, who is going to speak to us about chloroplast genome assembly. Anna is based at Melbourne Bioinformatics at the University of Melbourne and works with the Australian Biocommons to develop training and documentation relative to life science researchers, particularly in relation to analysis platforms such as Galaxy Australia and high HPC services. Anna's previous research covers taxonomy, evolutionary biology, genomics and bioinformatics, and she's an active contributor to Galaxy training materials. Welcome, Anna. I'll now hand over to you to get us started on the webinar. Thanks, Melissa, for that nice introduction. OK, so welcome, everyone, to today's webinar. So today, talking about um, chloroplast genome assembly using Galaxy Australia. So just a few terms to define before we start, and in case you're not familiar with some of these um, terms. A chloroplast, that's a photosynthetic organelle and that's found in plants and algae. Here's a um, picture of a moss under a microscope where you can see the little green circles, which are the chloroplasts. Um, this is very simplified, but where did chloroplasts come from? And it's thought that um, a prokaryotic cell ate another cell and um, that cell was photosynthetic and that cell has become the chloroplast organelle. So the chloroplast genome is um, somewhat similar to bacterial genomes because it has this history of being originally a bacterial um, cell, um, but there are many changes. So it's still typically a circular genome like bacterial genomes, but much smaller than most bacterial genomes. So around about 160,000 base pairs. And usually it's found in four parts in this circle. So there's um, a large single copy region, two inverted repeats, which are here in the light blue, and then a small single copy region. So that chloroplast genome is part of the whole plant genome, which includes the nuclear genome. So there's one copy of that per cell, and that's often really large, um, one gigabase to I think the largest is 150 gigabases. Um, yeah, so it can, can be very large. Um, and then there are lots of chloroplasts in the cell. So there are lots of chloroplast genomes in the cell, um, probably identical, but may not be. Um, and then there's also some mitochondrial genomes or in the mitochondria in the cell. So there's that mix of genomes in the plant. Um, but today we're looking at the chloroplast genome partly because it's nice and small, so it's quite tractable to use in this sort of demonstration. So if you're not familiar with genome assembly, again, this is a very big simplification, but I, I think it's still accurate. Um, 
when DNA is sequenced, it can't yet be sequenced in whole chromosomes at a time. So it's broken into small pieces and those small pieces are sequenced. Then they have to be joined back together to represent the genome as a whole. So in a very broad sense, that is done by overlapping these small fragments and um, extending that overlap and recreating the whole genome. It, it, is, um, it does have more complexity than that. Um, and some of you will definitely already be aware of that, but that is the general principle. Today we're using Galaxy. Galaxy is a really great resource if you are working in um, biology and bioinformatics and you want to analyze your data. It's free and you access it um, via a web page. We're using the Galaxy Australia server today. Um, and there are several other Galaxy servers around the world, but today we'll use Galaxy Australia. Um, I'll provide these links to at the end of the webinar so that you can follow up on some of these things. If you haven't used Galaxy before, it, it usually looks like this. So you access it by typing in the address of your Galaxy server. And then there are tools along the left-hand side and your history on the right-hand side. And your history is um, a record of all of the files that you have uploaded and the files that you've produced. So today I'm going to demonstrate a tutorial for assembling a chloroplast genome. So some of the parts of the analysis will typically take longer to run than we have the time in this webinar. So I will be using some previously generated results at times throughout the demonstration. So I know some of you might want to have Galaxy open and might want to be trying out some of the tools and that's definitely fine. I just don't recommend that you try and follow the same speed that I'm doing things because I don't think a lot of the analysis jobs will finish to give you those results to build on. So um, pro we'll provide all these links at the end so that you can follow this tutorial at your own pace. And then as Melissa said, there's a Q&A link for you to ask any questions. So this is not the most basic tutorial for um, genome assembly. Um, so I, I'm going to demonstrate it, but please don't be alarmed if you're new to Galaxy or assembly concepts. Um, I just hope it will serve as a nice overview of the sorts of things that you can do in Galaxy. And then there are other tutorials available that can give you um, a better paced introduction if you're new to either of those things. So I've put the links here. And again, these will be available at the end. So this tutorial was developed um, when I was working in my previous role. I was working at the Royal Botanic Gardens in Melbourne and working on a project which is the Genomics for Australian Plants project. And um, that has a component in it which is to upskill the plant genomics community in Australia. So this was one of the things I was working on um, and that project is still going and I'll provide the links at the end um, for all the funders and supporters of that project and recommend that you check it out if you're interested in plant genomes. Um, there's a lot of exciting things happening, a lot of new genomes um, being sequenced. This tutorial now is hosted on the Galaxy Training Network, which is an international um, community of people who contribute training material that work on Galaxy servers. So there's lots of good um, <clears throat> tutorials available there. So today, if you do want to follow along with um, just looking at the, um, the sites that I have open, I have opened the usegalaxy.org.au site and this other um, training webpage site. Um, are you able to put that one into the um, chat window, Melissa? Yes, that's fine. I've just put the awesome. link to Galaxy Australia and also to your tutorial into the chat box. Oh, thank you. Perfect. Um, but you don't have to have them open if you don't want to. Okay, so let's go to the tutorial material. And I'll have that open as a separate tab over here. And I'll have Galaxy open as another tab. 
So I'm just going to run through this tutorial, um, show you uh, what the steps are, what it looks like, um, and then we'll have a look at some of the results. So if you haven't used um, Galaxy before, you would open up Galaxy and you would log in here under user and there'd be a place to uh, register an account and log in. Um, if you were using um, Galaxy for the first time, your history here on the right hand side will be empty. You won't have any files in there. I already have a lot of files in here for today. That's why there's a lot of things along this side. So the first thing we're going to do in this tutorial is upload some data. So I'm following along this tutorial material. So here we're using real data from a sweet potato um, sequence genome. I've cut it down a lot so that it works better in this tutorial and I've put it on Zenodo. So the way we would do this is we would copy these Zenodo links. We go to Galaxy with the upload button paste fetch data, paste in there, start and close. So like I say, um, all of these steps are written in the tutorial. So you can follow along um, at your own pace after this webinar. So those files are now importing. I'll um, go back to some of the files that I imported earlier so we can have a look. So Sammy wanted to have a look at what these files are, if they look okay. So let's look at our Nanopore um, file. We can use the eye icon. And we can see um, this looks okay. Let's make that a little bit bigger. This looks like uh, what we would expect. This is a FASTQ file. So this first line is the read name. Then we have the sequence of the read, and then we have the quality scores um, coded by symbols underneath that. And then we have the next read and so on. So that looks like what we would expect. That's good. Our file's okay. Uh, so one thing we might wanna do here is look at um, the quality of our reads. We'll look at our nanopore reads today. We'll use a tool called Nanoplot. I go into the tool panel and I type in nanoplot and I find the tool here and I click on the tool. Now this brings up the tool panel in the center here where I can give it information that it needs such as which file to use and any settings. So here um, you can usually use the default settings um, at least for when you're starting to use a tool but um, we always recommend reading more about the tool there's usually a link at the bottom of this tool panel um, to take you to the full documentation so that you can understand what all the settings are doing. So here we'll give it the correct file, which is the Nanopore file. And then I will click execute. This is producing five output files and they will all be appearing at the top of our current history. So I've already done that before, so we can have a look at the results. Um, we might look at the HTML report. So again, we'll click on the eye icon. This HTML report will appear in the center. And this has lots of useful information. So depending on your analysis, um, you would be looking for different things here. You might need particularly long reads for, for some of the work that you're doing, or you might need particularly accurate reads. So uh, I won't go into the detail about all the different things you would look at, but I just wanted to show you that um, this nice graphical output is available. And then you can look at it here. We can look at the histogram at read lengths. We can see that they're all, they're not too bad. They're sort of around a lot of them around the 5,000 base pair length. That's fairly good. Um, but yeah, you, for your analysis, you may need um, really long reads for some reason. So this is where you can look at your data and see if it's suitable. 
So now we'll move ahead to assemble these long reads together. We will use a tool called Fly. This is a really nice assembly tool designed for um, long reads. So we need to give it the correct file, banana core reads. We'll give it the estimated genome size here. Um, here I'm actually going to use an older version of Fly and I'll explain why in a minute. So sometimes Galaxy has several versions of a tool available. Just put that back in. And then we're going to keep the other settings as the default settings and execute that. So this is making five output files as well. Let's look at some of the results from earlier. So first we'll look at the log file. Use the eye icon. This has a lot of text in it from um, the output of the tool when it ran. And I always like to scroll down to the bottom here to get an overview of what Fly has assembled. Here it has assembled um, a total length of 160,395 bases, which is great. That's about what we thought and it's done so in two contexts. So one of the nice things in Galaxy is um, we can get a, a view of that assembly um, from the assembly graph. So we'll do that with a tool called Bandage. Uh, I'm just going to run bandage image now, not bandage info. So we need to give it our um, assembly from fly, which is the faster file for the assembled contigs. So that was the, sorry, no, we need to give it the graphical fragment assembly here. Okay, um, I won't put the node name labels or the length labels on here. We'll just give it the graphical fragment assembly and we will execute that. And that's gonna give us an assembly graph uh, visualized. It's a bit large, make that a bit smaller. Oops. So that's nice. That's given us um, visualization of the assembly of the chloroplast genome. So what we can see here is um, this fits with what we would expect for the chloroplast genome. This green part is likely to be this large single copy region. This blue part is likely to be the small single copy region. And the red part here is the collapsed inverted repeats. So it's collapsed those into one piece here and then joined the other pieces either side. Um, so the reason I actually used the older version of Fly in this demonstration was because it gives this representation, which is, is a nice way of getting that first idea of what the, the genome, the chloroplast genome is um, structured like. But um, since I wrote this tutorial, Fly has actually been, um, a, new, a new version has been released and um, the assembly with the newer version actually produces a full circle, which is really nice. Um, it's just not as interesting to look at for these purposes. So, um, but I guess that's a good um, thing to point out that Galaxy is always including new tools and um, new versions of existing tools. So if something new does come out, it's always worth repeating um, previous work to see if perhaps some of the things in the new tool or new version can improve your analysis.
So in this demonstration, we also have a set of short reads from Illumina sequencing, and they have a higher accuracy than the longer nanocore reads. So we're going to use these short reads to polish this assembly that we've generated. So first of all, we need to map these short reads to our assembly. So we'll use a tool called BWA MEM. A bit bigger. So um, we need to tell it to use a genome from our history because we're using the genome that we've generated. And this genome was the fly assembly, which is the, the scaffolds here. So we tell it to use file number five. Uh, we need to tell it that these are single, um, single end reads. And then we need to give it this Illumina data set. And then we will set that to run. So this is making a BAM file, which is an alignment file of the reads against the assembly. Once we've made that file, we can use that in another tool called Pylon to polish the genome. So using Pylon, we need to again use the genome from history. We need to use the scaffolds file, which was file five. And then we need to give it this BAM file that we just generated. So I'll just give it the most recent BAM file because it's the same, which is file 54. And here we are going to click yes for create a changes file because this will show us all of the changes that were made during the polishing. And I always find that quite useful. So we'll set that to run. So it goes, I know I'm scrolling up and down a lot, but um, it's putting my new files at the top. So this is making three output files from running Pylon. Oh, that was quick. Um, the file that I was talking about called the changes file, we can have a look at that. Oh, it's not super lined up, but um, if we view that in a, a table form, we can see all the changes that have been made. The actual polished assembly is the faster file here. Again, that's two sequences and um, that's our polished genome. We won't run faster statistics today, but that's something that you can do if you want to compare to faster files, so to assembly faster files. So that's a really, really brief and quick summary of those steps. If we had assembled our genome and we were happy with the assembly, we might want to next annotate it. So identify pieces of information on that um, genome, particularly gene sequences. So we can do this um, with our genome. In the tutorial, I link out to a site, which is really good for doing this sort of chloroplast genome assembly. Um, it's a, a tool called GEseq, and I provi provide the link to that tool. So um, I would suggest, um, if you had assembled your genome here in Galaxy, I would suggest downloading that faster file to your computer and then uploading it to the GEseq um, website. I'll show you what it looks like. You'd go here and you would upload your file and then um, read a little bit about the tool so you know what things you're um, telling it to do. And um, then you'll receive your um, annotated genome. And one of the outputs of that annotation is a GFF file, which is the annotated assembly. 
And that's something you can then download to your computer and re-upload back into Galaxy and keep working on in Galaxy. So in a perfect world, a tool such as this, um, if it was okay with the owners, um, which it might well be, um, this sort of tool would be in Galaxy. So we could do this seamlessly. And maybe that's something that will happen in the future, ideally, um, because that would be really, really useful. So instead of doing that today, though, I'm going to use a tool in Galaxy, which is designed for annotating bacterial genomes. So it's not perfect for the chloroplast genome, but because the chloroplast genome has some similarities with bacterial genomes, we'll just use it as an approximation. So what we'll do is we'll look for the tool, which is called Proca. Then we need to give it our um, polished assembly. So I'm just trying to see what file number that will be. That's file number 20. And we'll just use all the default settings there. And we'll run that tool. So yeah, I'm not advising that you would definitely use Proca for chloroplast genome annotation, but just for the purposes today, um, as an example of an annotator, I'm just using that here. So we can have a, have a look at what it looks like. So we can see Proca is still running here at the top, but I'll use a previous uh, version of Proca results. So I'll go back down through here. So Proca produces a text file output, which is a summary. Have a look at that. We can see that it's annotated a lot of coding sequences and some RNAs. And then it's made this GFF file, which is our annotation file. So that's it in text form, but let's have a look at that GFF file lined up against our assembly. So there's a great tool in Galaxy called JBrowse. And what we'll do is we will use JBrowse to view this annotation. So we'll search for JBrowse over here in the tools. So we want to tell it to use our polished assembly. So genome from history, which was file number 20. I haven't followed my own advice here, which is um, keep your files name, named well. <laughs> so if you do um, perform an analysis, you can always rename the file afterwards using the pencil icon, and that will make it easier for you to know what the file is. So don't do what I did here, which is to not rename it. Okay, so we'll use the reference genome, which is file number 20. That's our polished genome. So that's what we'll be running as sort of the, the top of our JBrowse window, that reference genome. We'll tell it to use the correct code, the bacterial and plastid code. Now we'll insert a track group. So this is like a line running underneath that assembly and insert annotation track. There are different track types that you can put here to view under your assembly. So in the drop down menu, you can see all the options. Here we're going to use our GFF um, type. And we're using our Proca output. I've done that twice, that's why there's two of them there. And then we'll just set that to run. So this is making a single output file, which is a JBrowse file. Again, I'll go and look at an earlier version of that. Oh, got too many files.
Okay, and I'm just going to collapse the side panels here in Galaxy with these lower arrows in the bottom corners. So I just collapse that tool panel, collapse the history panel, tick this track for the GFF, the annotations, tick the track for the reference sequence, zoom in a little bit, I think, so you can see. Um, so these, I'll zoom in again with this inbuilt plus zoom button. So we can see that um, the annotations um, are there across the genome um, and they're named here. We can zoom out again. These are probably not the correct annotations exactly because we haven't used um, a chloroplast specific tool for this. So, but the principle is the same. We've got our genome and we've got our named features and we can see their location um, with this viewer. So I'll zoom right out and we can see all our annotations there. So your annotations will help you um, interpret your genome assembly and interpret whether it's correct or um, whether it's particularly interesting. So that's always a really useful thing to do. But another way we might want to check the correctness of our assembly is taking those raw reads that we use to assemble it and map them back to the assembly. So that's something I've got here in the tutorial um, in the section called View Reads. So I'll expand my side panels again so I can see. So I've made um, an additional file to use in this tutorial to look at those reads. We could use the actual read sets um, that we used for the assembly, but they're, they're quite large to view in that JBrowse window. So as an example, I've cut down those files even further so that it's just a bit easier to see them when we want to look at the read mapping. So I've added those read sets on Zenodo as well. Um, and so if we want to import them again, we copy those links. We go to the upload button, paste fetch data, paste in here. And then it will add these two files at the top of our history. So let's map them to our genome and see how they look. So we'll use BWAMEM. We'll use a genome from history. We'll use our polished um, assembly. These are single end reads. The data set we want to use is the tiny data set, not the reduced data set. So really small data set just for these purposes. These are the Illumina ones. So the analysis mode is simple Illumina mode. And that will create our first BAM file, our first alignment file. We would repeat that with the mapping the nanopore reads to the assembly. And then we would make a JBrowse file again, where we tell it to display the assembly and the two BAM tracks of the aligned reads. So we'll just have a look at what the JBrowse setup would be for this. We go to JBrowse, use the genome from history, use file number 20, set the correct genetic code. And this is where we're inserting the first track group, the first annotation track. Uh, when we were looking at the annotations, we used the GFF file, but this time we're using a BAM file. So I click on the drop down menu and go to the BAM setting. And then here I need to find the correct BAM file. Again, I should have labeled this correctly. 
this should be a good lesson. It's these two files. So it's 22 is one of our tracks. And we'll insert another track. Again, this is a BAM file and this will be file 23 and execute that. So that's making another JBrowse visualization for us. And I'll go to the earlier output of that, so we won't wait for that to run. Getting a very big history here now. Okay, here's the output of that. Again, I'll collapse these side panels so we can see a bit better. I'll click the track names. So I think this is a really nice way to visualize what's going on. We've got our um, assembly, um, just one of the contigs is being shown here in, in the um, drop down box. And then we've got all of our tiny Illumina reads, well, tiny in comparison to our nanopore reads. They're all mapped and we've got our um, nanopore reads down here. So let's zoom in a bit. So if we zoom in a fair way, we can start to see the detail of the actual reads. So in our Illumina reads, our short reads at the top here, we can see every now and again, we can see um, a little bit of a different color block, which is indicating to us um, that there is a difference in the read compared to the um, assembly. I'll just make that reference sequence a bit easier to see. We'll take out some of the, we'll take out the translation and I'll zoom in here. So in this Illumina read here, um, we can see there's a, a T in the read, which is different to our assembly. And what I wanted to show you here was that by looking at these reads, um, if you're not familiar with short reads and long reads, I think this gives a really nice visualization of the um, high error rate in the long reads. So look at all the different colors in these long reads, lots of errors compared to the assembly, whereas in the short reads, most of them are quite accurate compared to the assembly. So the long reads are really useful for us sort of to get this structure of um, genomes, but um, the error rate of them is still relatively high. And so we might wanna use these short reads to correct any of those errors. Although having said that, there are a lot of advances in the long read technology and the error rate is lowering. So, you know, in a, in a perfect world, we should probably have long reads with hardly any errors. And that would be a really easy way to assemble genomes. So that's our assembly, our annotation, and looking at the reads mapped back to the assembly to start to investigate whether the raw reads really support all parts of that assembly. So you could look at that in detail, see if there's any parts in the assembly where no reads map, perhaps that's a misassembly or parts of the assembly where there might be a really high coverage of reads, perhaps that's um, a collapsed repeat. So lots of reads are mapping there. It's been assembled into one, one part, but in the real genome, it might exist in two separate parts. So at the bottom of this tutorial, I have added some information about how you might wanna repeat this with different data. So I'm going to give um, a quick look at workflows here. So 
So if you're trying this tutorial yourself and you try it with the sweet potato data and that all works well, you can try it again with some data from the snow gum. Um, one of the really good things about Galaxy is its workflows. So Galaxy can keep a record of all of those steps that you did, and then you can repeat them all onto new data. So if we look at all of our histories here in Galaxy with this button at the top of the history um, panel, view all histories, you can create a new history. You can drag your um, files into a new history, so um, you can use them again. It will keep them in the original history too. Let's take in our um, four files that we used in this workshop. Go back to analyze data. So I've got a new history here with these four data files. The two um, input data files for assembling the genome and then two of them for looking at those reads mapped back to the genome. Um, I'm going to name the history. So in Galaxy, if you go to the workflow button at the top, um, people publish workflows and make them publicly available for use, or you can also have your own workflows here that um, you can reuse. So here I've got a workflow um, for this work that we've done here today, which is this combined workflows, sweet potato assembly. I'm going to run this workflow on this data set again. So I've clicked the run button and all I need to do here is tell it the right files to use. So for the nanopore input reads, it needs to use this nanopore reduced FASTQ. For the input Illumina reads, it needs to use the Illumina reduced set. So they are our two main data sets. But then we had this read mapping step where we used a really tiny set of reads. So we've got tiny Illumina set and a tiny nanopore set. So that's all we really need to add into this workflow. It's um, got all of the steps in it and then we can run it. And that will add all of the files here to the current history. And, um, and that's all you need to do. So it's, it's a really nice way of redoing things without having to manually enter all of those steps in again. And the way that the workflows look, if you're setting one up or modifying one, you can have a look at them on this sort of workflow sheet. So we'll go to the edit button, collapse my side panels here. So this is the workflow that we did today. It looks a bit complicated because we did do a lot of steps, but if you're setting one up to run, um, you can start small, obviously. So it, it's a good way to see of, um, which inputs go to which tools. So we used nanopore reads, we sent them to an assembly tool and the output of that, for example, the graphical fragment assembly, that output went to bandage and we looked at that assembly graph in, um, in Galaxy. So we've joined everything that we did together here all the way through. And um, at the very end, we saw the um, annotated polished assembly. So I just wanted to point out that workflow feature because it's really handy um, for repeating work that you've done um, fairly easily. So if we go back then to the slides, so what, what did we cover today? So it was very fast, but I hope it wasn't too fast. The demonstration of a Galaxy workshop, we used real sequencing data, although highly reduced in size um, from these two papers that I recommend having a look at if you wanna see how a real analysis um, actually proceeds. Um, it's not quite as simplified as this analysis. Um, so yes, we use sweet potato and if you did the extension exercise, that's the snow gum data and we assembled our genome and then we polished it. This is a simplified um, image of that workflow that we looked at. We had our reads, assembled them, sent them to be polished 
annotated that polished assembly and then viewed that polished assembly in JBrowse. It is a bit more complicated what we actually did. So it had all of these additional steps, but workflows are easy to rerun. Some of the results that we had, we had, um, for example, for the quality control step, looking at the nanopore reads, we had a histogram of read lengths, but there was lots of other information there if you want to learn more about your input data. Um, another result we had was this um, assembly um, graph of the genome. And the one that we looked at, we had our genome assembled into what is probably um, the long single copy region, the short single copy region, and the collapsed inverted repeat region. And something else we looked at was these annotations, and we looked at them in the JBrowse window um, against our assembly sequence. So if you want to try this out yourself, so I definitely love it if people try out this tutorial. Um, you can also try, um, there's lots of optional steps that I've put into that tutorial as well. So for example, um, for the quality control step, here we just use the tool Nanoplot, but um, there are other tools that you can use. And there's even a really nice tool um, which gives you your quality scores in emoji. So that's quite fun. I highly recommend that. Um, but you might also want to do quality control on your Illumina data, of course. So there are lots of tools in Galaxy for doing that particular step. And then if you're doing the tutorial yourself, you might want to try different tools as well. So we use the tool here today, Fly, but there are lots of other assembly tools. You might want to use um, the tool Canoe or the tool Unicycler. They're both very good. Um, the Galaxy Training Network has lots of tutorials though, so if you're new to Galaxy or you just want to see what's available, I highly recommend looking at that website. And that's the end. So the link to these slides is here at this tiny URL. So if you want any of the links that I talked about in the slides, just open up this tiny URL, uh, webinar slash Galaxy slash December slash 2020. And I'd just like to thank, um, before we do the q and I'd just like to thank um, lots of people who've been involved, um, the Galaxy team, um, the uh, Australian Biocommons and Melbourne Bioinformatics for hosting me. And in particular for this tutorial, I'd like to thank the Genomics for, the Aust for Australian Plants project, um, in particular um, the Botanic Gardens where I was based when I wrote this, and um, the, some of the funders for that project. So the full funders are listed here at this link, um, including more detail about that project if you want to um, know more about it. Yeah, so thanks for coming to the webinar and I'm happy to answer any um, questions now if we have some time. Yeah, so um, one question is, can we use PacBio data as well? Yes, you definitely can. Um, there's lots of good options for that. Um, so in this tutorial, the process we used was because we had long reads and short reads, we used our long reads first to sort of assemble with basic structure. And then we used our short reads for um, polishing. So instead of using nanopore data in that first part, you could use your PacBio long reads. So that would definitely work. Uh, another question, can, can I confirm if we use the total genome nanopore reads? No, so for this example, um, the published data includes the full um, nanopore genome reads. I extracted um, the set that sort of matches chloroplast DNA, and then I narrowed that down further. So no, we, this tutorial was not using the whole, um, all of the genomic reads because that is so large. So yeah, had to do an initial step in the data prep, which I think is detailed on the Z Zenodo link about how I cut down um, that data set. And just on that topic, is it possible to use the whole data set if you wanted to analyze that? Um, possibly. Um, and this is something that's sort of under active research and development at the moment in Galaxy. 
we are looking at ways of how we can use really big data sets, um, ways we can speed it up. Um, so I guess my answer for now is watch this space because um, we are hoping to um, be able to do that and to be able to demonstrate that. So once we, we can, we will definitely be letting the community know. I think just the last question is, what is the rough time? Um, sometimes that depends on, so if we were to run all of those steps, how long would it take? Um, sometimes if there's no queue in Galaxy, um, these steps that I've run have run very quickly. So even if I just have a quick look into my, um, um, the one that we just set to run. So that's already run. You know how I um, just clicked on the workflow and clicked run? All of those steps have run. So that's, it could run that quickly um, if there's no queue in Galaxy, which there very well might not be. So this is a very small data set though. So, but yes, presumably um, could run in sort of five to 10 minutes. Okay, well, that unfortunately is all that we have time for today. Uh, thank you very much, Anna, for that great overview of how you can approach chloroplast genome assembly in Galaxy. If you would like a more hands-on tutorial on how to do this, Anna is actually running a workshop on this very topic next year in April. And the details on that workshop are up on the BioCommons website now, and it is open for registration. It is first come first serve. So if you'd like to come along, go and have a look at that now and, and put, pop your details in there. As Anna mentioned, there's also a lot of other training materials available on the Galaxy Training Network. There are many detailed and excellent self-paced tutorials that you can work through to help familiarize yourself both with Galaxy and different types of bioinformatics analyses. So this was our last webinar for 2020, but we will be back in 2021 with more webinars and more workshops. If you would like to find out about those, keep an eye on our website and also on our Twitter feed. Finally, before we leave today, a thank you to our funders. Australian Biocommons is enabled by the NCRIS via BioPlatforms Australia funding. Thanks very much for joining us and we hope to see you again soon. Thanks and bye for now. <laughs>